Which one? Um, um that that's an easy like with a dotting tool. Okay. Here, hold on. Pull it back. Hi everyone. We're discussing what we're doing today. And uh let's see if no. what is going on? That is not correct. Have any people with you? I'm trying to see if it's coming up. That says a day ago. This is not my life. This one should be live. All right, so we're talking about what she wants to do. So she's showing me this picture I can show here too. Um, let me switch to this one. Okay, so she's showing me this picture, which, you know, your clients are going to come in and they're going to have pictures. So you just want to kind of evaluate it. And I'm like, okay, well, these ones are done with a dotting tool and just pull the brush and a French. And she was saying that she might want to do it with an orange. And I really, really like copper dust is really good. And also, those ones are, yeah, copper dust is a, um, this one. So this is a cat eye, which I think would be really cool. It'd give a really neat look. Um, it's got a metallic to it. Or there's copper dust, which is my other favorite. Um, I like the cat eye. Yeah, cat eye. All right, we'll do cat eye then. Done and done. All right. So I'm a big cat eye fan, by the way. You know that. So this is not supposed to do this correctly. All right, I'm going to stop this for a minute. We'll be back. I need to fix it. I don't want it to... So I don't mind whatever you decide if we wanted to reshape or not reshape. Oh, the almond? It's up to you. We totally can. Can we do that? Are yeah. they long enough? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, hi again. Sorry, technical difficulties. I didn't want it to automatically switch to the different camera angles, so I figured out how to turn that off. So I can switch to side view when you guys want me to, and that's going to be how I'm going to set it up from now on. So. If you guys want a side view, just say, hey, can we see the side view? And I can switch to that camera angle really easily. So, hi. All right, let me see if I can keep an eye on Facebook too. Mm -hmm. All right, so if you see comments pop up, you get to be the, the reader. MC. <laughs> it's a little bit tricky. We're trying to figure out, you know, the whole thing. So she also is going to go from a square shape to an almond. So I'm going to show you guys how I switch shapes. So. I don't do most of my shaping with my e-file, but I do take away both. So I'm just going to do a rough side shaping um, with the e-file, and then the rest is all going to be perfecting it by hand. So definitely more uh, hand filing. And I do have the fan on, of course, so it's going to be noisy for a few minutes. This is Sarah, everybody. Hello. So we have discussed what we're going to do. What nude do you want? Is there a certain one you want me to pick? Do you want to look at the nude selection? My goal is to figure out if I can do a split screen so that you guys can see the top and the side view at the same time. Um, but I don't have time to figure that out. So it was either no split screen or split screen.
So again, I'm just going to take the corners off because we're going to go almond. Um, I'm not taking any length off because we're going to need to be able to reshape it and I don't want it to be too short. But starting out, just taking the corners off of my e-file will just make it go faster when I go to reshape with my hand file. So if you are new to my channel, welcome. If you are an old subscriber and this is your first client video back with me because it's my first one back in like a year, welcome. I'm risking uh, putting my face out there, so if I make funny faces, don't shoot me. Huh? You're being brave. I know. I think so. But then people will recognize me when I run into them. You're going to be famous. No, no. We don't. I'm going to have to hide from the proper red that shirt. I just do know that. <laughs> Not important. Isn't it? You're gonna get the happen. I swear I've seen you somewhere. Okay, so for the nude, there's a couple I didn't know if I should go like with this orangey undertone, maybe not no. And then I was thinking a milky. Oh, like toy, the milky white? Yeah, or like, but then I was looking at like hush or altitude. What do you think? Those are, this yeah, is hush. that's nice. Yeah. And altitude. Is oh, that one? one's nice too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to be any help. Okay. Um, If anyone's watching on YouTube, say hey so I know this is working. Because I got the chat rooms open and so I can try to see what's up. So please let me know if y'all are on Facebook or on YouTube. Just so I know you guys are there. Um, so I'm not recording in pain. <laughs> what did we do last time? An ombre? We did, yeah. Uh, a gray and pink. We did a gray like. ombre, yeah. Gray Fade. On. Yeah, it's pretty. Because gray on pink. Any fun travels these days? Sarah's my fellow fun traveler. She yeah. likes to go out in the world as much as I do. <laughs> we have to go to together. More. We don't get to go together. We no, need to go together. that would be really fun. I should. Let me know if you need help on a cruise. <laughs> This is the last cruise I think I'm planning. And it's not because I don't, I don't mind the cruise part and the planning of the cruise part. What is the pain is that the cruise ships are, it's such a pain to get conference rooms space booked. To work with them. It took months to get, they wanted every listing of every product and all the MSD sheets and exactly how much everyone's bringing on and exactly the size of everything and awesome. what's being left. I'm like, nothing's being left. And it was, it was ridiculous. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I don't know that I want to do a cruise again because that was all a pain. That, granted, that was with Carnival Royal wasn't so bad, but they did take a really long time to confirm that I had meeting space. And it's like, I'm advertising that I'm doing a, you know, a seminar. So how can I advertise I'm doing a seminar if I don't know if I have seminar space? So... You have to wait forever. You oh, working. hey, everybody. Yeah. Yay. Good. I'm sorry if it's a lot of background noise with the fan on at the moment. Um, I don't know how much it picks it up on here. But the camera is closer to my face than it is the fan. So I was hoping that you hear me okay. I'm hoping if people comment on Facebook that it doesn't disappear. I really hate that it started doing that. But it might not do it anymore. You know, it's been a year, so I have no idea what happens anymore. I just, I'm glad I finally figured out how to make it go live on Facebook and YouTube so that everybody can be happy. I'm all about trying to make everybody happy. Again, just taking off the corners a little bit. Try not to overdo it because I want to make sure that I have stuff to file. Mm. 
and I like them short. Yeah, it'll so, I'll go shorter yeah. once I file them. I just if I take it all off right now, then you can't have that shape. Right, and you're always really good about that, like leaving, knowing how much to leave to be able to make the shapes. Yeah, if you're going from square to almond, don't remove any length. Do it with your hand file because if you remove your length and then you try to shape it, you're going to end up with them really, really short or have a really hard time shaping it. Going almond, you need to have a little bit more length on it to be able to get into the sides. So. Any questions on the YouTube? No, I don't see any yet. Okay, good. Everyone's just saying it's working and yep, okay. it's working good. Yes. Let me tell you, I can't I'm even, well. they can tell me, oh good. Um, yeah, I can't even tell you how many um, systems I researched to try to figure out how to do this so that it would go on YouTube, save on YouTube, go on Facebook, save on Facebook. It's very tricky. Mm -hmm. But I'm very glad that I finally figured out a way. I think that's a special gift you have. Huh. What? Well, determination just, to figure stuff I, out. Yes. It took a year. So, some people just give up. I mean, I felt like I gave up for a year. But I was looking. I was trying to find it. I finally found a bunch of YouTube videos on how it works. And it up and gave me a little anxiety. I'm not a big anxious person, but it gave me some anxiety. Alright, dusting everything with my little dust brush, dust, dust, dust. It's funny because it's a little delayed. It, yeah, it's going to be a little delayed. Um, and if you've seen any of my videos before, I do, I don't work with gloves. I'm, I'm an old nail tech. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 20 years ago when I became a nail tech, nobody used gloves. That wasn't a thing. And in the last, I'd say five years, it's become really popular. Which is great and fine, but I just not I'm just not used to it at all. I can't see any live chat. I wonder if it's turned off. If it's turned off, somebody text me. All right, I'm gonna move this for a second. That's not even that close in that one right now, so it's okay. Going into my disinfectant tray and grabbing out my three items that I will use. I use these for pretty much every appointment. So these are the three things that I grab: a pusher. I always have multiple in my disinfectant tray because, you know, sometimes I drop things or whatever. So I push her. Nippers. These are Stalix uh, 35 millimeter. And my favorite bit. When I discovered that bit, I was so happy. You've misplaced one before. You've misplaced them before. And it's a little bit of a... Where did it go? Or, yeah, you can, well, I have like, like I, four or five in there. Yeah. But yeah, when it's like missing on the table, mm -hmm. I'm like, did I throw it? Because sometimes I have thrown them away on accident, like with all my little wipes and stuff. I'll, it has made its way into the pile mm -hmm. of wipes and it will go into the garbage and it's sad. And but, once I found one and you're like, oh, there oh, it yeah. is. <laughs> well, you do want to replace them. So a lot of people don't replace their bits often enough. You really want to replace them every 20 to 40 services. So... If you're doing a client an hour and 40 hours a week, that's a bit a week. So if you stretch that even, no, that's not, that's not good. Um, if you stretch that out and you did it, say, every other week, that's a bit every other week. And I do sell a lot of bits, but I'm not selling that many bits, which means there's a lot of people probably not changing their bits out often enough. When do you know do you need to change your bit? Usually you can tell pretty quickly if your um, clients are noticing heat when you're prepping them and uh, and it's just it doesn't it's feeling like it's smoothing it out more than it is um, doing its job so I almost feel like it's more bumpy when it your bit is good and it'll feel really smooth when your bit starts to get too smooth so I use a foot pedal um, so that I can control the speed. That's full speed. And I probably go about a third. So 10,000 10, RPM maybe. And I like this because I can get into 
and around the cuticle really nice clean up everything and you can treat this a little bit like you know how Russian manicure will and you can buff the skin if you want and all of that kind of thing I do sometimes um, if someone has skin that needs it but um, I'm, I'm old school I still use the standard nipper to clean up the cuticles after I prep this part and these are a good month old yeah yeah they're yeah. about five weeks five weeks yeah which is pretty standard for her most of my clients are somewhere between three and I guess five weeks um I can tell if I didn't push it back so I need to push back I'm trying to find your live on Facebook. It should be on my page. Love news, right? Yeah. Oh, maybe it's set to private again. I, I, I'm not seeing Let me go to settings. Can it? Will it let me? Hi y'all, if you're just popping in on YouTube, um, and it should pop up back on YouTube. Hey, I'm back. Sorry guys. I, um, I figured out that my, I was having the same problem I did the other day when I was testing the system out, which was my Facebook setting was set to only me, which is why nobody was popping up on the live. Oops, here it is. All right, so now it should work on both technical difficulties. There we go. Oopsies. Maybe. Getting it figured out, guys. Coming back from a long hiatus, there's always going to be a couple at the beginning that are going to be a little bit of a juggle. And you're fine, you're perfectly, what's the name of this bit? Oh, hello. Okay, so this bit is the football, um, 2S football. It on the gel, like the belly of it kind of stays on the gel. Um, and then it, the pointed part can get right under that cuticle and it's really made a huge difference in my client's, um, cuticle health. Actually, I have one client in particular, Shana, mm -hmm. who she used to get just really, really thick cuticles. Oh, Hey, everybody Perfect. on Facebook popped up. Yay. Hello. We see you. Perfect. Thanks everyone. Good morning, Brenda. Good morning. All, all right, cool. I'm glad everything's working. Yay. Okay. So, um, let me see if this is, just tell me if it needs to be like something. <laughs> I think they said it looked good. Okay. The good. YouTubers said it looked good. Perfect. Uh, Excellent. Everyone's happy. Perfect. That makes me happy. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's the 2S bit. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I go through with my nice nippers. Again, these are Stalix. Um, they're the Smart 30, so they're not the super expensive ones. They're actually a super good price, which is lovely because you want to replace them often when they start getting dull. This is, I feel like, my surgery phase. Do you know I was going to be a surgeon? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I forgot this job. So I feel like this is when I get to pretend. Yeah. I liked surgery when I used to, back when I was a youngin, I would assist. I worked at a vet clinic from oh, like yeah. mm -hmm. the time I was like 15. And um, just going to buff that little bit of skin. 
um, from the time I was, well, I volunteered before I was 16. Hmm? It said youngin. You, youngin? you said youngin. <laughs> <laughs> Since that was a youngin. Oh, yeah, because it's doing an auto. Um, and, uh, yeah, I really liked doing surgery. I let, Not doing surgery, but assisting in surgery. And so they would have me assist in surgery while the other vet techs would, you know, do all the dogs. other stuff. Yeah, do all the other stuff. So it was really fun. And like six hours could go by and I it would just seem like a blink of an eye. But it was way too much school for my liking. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't have the freedom I have now. Like I really like, you know, you like traveling. I like traveling. If I worked for somebody, I wouldn't get to do that when I want. I think you're a good patient teacher, too. Oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. I try. Cleaning everything up. So all of this process from the time the client sits down and I start filing off their color and prepping their nails usually is half an hour until I pick up my gel brush. So if you are trying to figure out how to get your services down in time, first you need to break down what's taking you a long time. So some clients don't have any cuticles to go at, and it's like a two-second thing. And some you've got to get a little bit more cleaning going on. But I try to make sure everything is really nice when they leave so that they feel good. I know that when people... You know, go out of if I go out of town for a really long time and I have to see somebody else, or usually they go out of town and they're gone for more than a month. So they're like, oh, I'll just I'll try someone somewhere. It's happened a few times, not too often, but most of the time when people go somewhere else and they come back, they're like, they didn't do my cuticles well. So you know, it may seem like it's something that isn't important because it's not the gel portion of your nail, but it's definitely noticed by your clients if you're not doing it. What does that mean, bring them on video? Those are, it lets people okay. like go like Zoom basically. Oh, okay. So if it was, you know, someone like, like Kathleen from Puerto Rico, I have so much fun with her. She was at the Accent Summit. She's a educator in Puerto Rico. And um, she's like, you should go live and bring me on. So sometime I will. <laughs> <laughs> she's so funny. We had a really good time. I like her. So, yeah, we did the Accent Summit last weekend, the meeting. Big meeting and awards show, whole ceremony thing and classes and whatnot. So that's fun. I just noticed you have two different kinds of nails on. I do. So after the summit, <laughs> <laughs> I know. And these are a bit longer than what I usually wear, maybe. Yeah. Um, so we did the accent summit. And then after that was Olena Osman's um, class. And she's like major world champion. She's awesome. So I, I am always up to learn. And I was super excited to take her class. I was going to go to Berlin to take her class and then COVID. So I hadn't gotten to take one from her yet um, because the last time she came and did the class at the summit, they didn't tell us until like a few weeks before. And I had like days full of people of clients. I'm like, I can't move people now. Like that's not enough notice. So I feel like I should be able to zoom in a little bit. Your friend hey, Kathleen is flying back to Puerto Rico now. She's watching on on the plane. Oh, wow. Fancy plane. Hey, look at I zoomed in. Yay, I figured something out. <laughs> we figured a lot out. We're actually on video. <laughs> yeah, we're on, we're on two at the same time. And I was and able to zoom in. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for all you East Coasters, it's early here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, right now I have two shapes and uh, these are super long for me and so I just keep bumping them into everything because I'm not super used to it but I'm impressed with how well I'm typing actually mm -hmm. I've gotten used to them rather quickly but I'll I'll shorten and reshape them I have the nail crews in like two weeks so I'll shorten and reshape them and do something fun for Halloween or 
I haven't decided if I'm going to go like tropical because we're going to Mexico and do something like oceany water. Day of the Dead. You have to do Day of the Dead. Right? Or do something for that. Is that a good enough length? Yes. That's a good you. length. All right. Perfect. So she's all, she's now almond from being square. Um, so we're doing the, um, Universal Studios Scream Haunted House thing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> My friend Jessica White, she was saying that she wanted to do it, and Sean was super excited. He likes horror stuff, and Larissa does too, you know, teenagers. And so I was like, yeah, we can, yeah, let's do it. They'll love it. But oh my gosh. Universal, yeah. It is so expensive, and it's a weekend night, and so oh, we have to do the express pass because otherwise you're just not going to do it all. So you take the ticket price, and then you add that express pass thing so you can actually go do everything you're there to do, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, right. sell a kidney. So, And there's no special discounts. Yeah. Are you watching any of these? Yes. Hi! Yes. People are saying welcome back. Woohoo! Alm almond rains the breast. Is <laughs> I like my almond ones too. Yeah. I feel like it's definitely becoming. I think people are starting to phase out of the coffin a little bit right now. I'm seeing some people that'll come back in and be like, "Can you go more square? Can we try different shapes?" So I feel like the the coffin is starting to kind of make its way out, and maybe almond is going to come back and be a little bit more shape to go by so I try to get in on the side um, when I'm doing these and make sure that you've got your sides aren't drooping down when you get your shape so make sure you're coming in on the side and making sure that that's totally smooth wasn't that fancy you mm -hmm. didn't see it I went I was able to switch it super fast yeah that was, see? I'm so impressed with myself. You are right getting now. really good at this. <gasps> That's just learning. That was awesome. And I learned how to make these cute little videos. Did you see them on my Facebook? Yes. Aren't you? Aren't they so cute? Yes, I even did one so yesterday. Cute. I was like, I was at the property helping. They're real, out. right? Yeah, they're like <laughs> reels, but they're old. <laughs> Isn't that what it's called? <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> But like, you know, trying to remember, okay, I got to do lots of little videos, which I did actually on our trip this summer that I've only posted a week's worth of pictures of. Um, I started editing the ones from London. I have all of London and Wales that I haven't journaled throughout. But I did take a ton of little like short little clips to mm -hmm. be able to do that with. I'm like, someday I'm going to learn how to do this. So I did it. I took all the little videos. And then when I was at the Accent Summit, um... Elena, so there's Olena and Elena. Elena taught me how to put it together, like use this app that, like, that does it for them. I always thought it was all these people taking forever to fix. No. No. There's if there's an app for that. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. We're in 2023. There's an app for that. <laughs> yeah. So she showed me. Um, Rhonda says hi. Hi. Hello, hello. Yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah, so she showed me how to do it, and I'm like, well, this is so much easier. And so last night when I was at Costco waiting on dinner, because I'm like, okay, if I don't leave, I'm not going to be able to make dinner. And they're like, why don't you just go get a pizza at Costco? And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay. $10 pizza at Costco. So. Yeah, it's good dinner. In a pinch. Yeah, and it'll keep the 18-year-old boy well-fed, <laughs> which is a challenge. <laughs> So I can't get in here just how I want to. So I'm actually going to go in and just make sure she gets a little hook on the corner. And I want to make sure that that shape on that corner is symmetrical. So that's what I did. Um, yeah, so while I was waiting for the pizza to be made, I made the little one of us hanging out on the property yesterday. Cute. Yeah, Jared was pushing the gravel compactor. For compacting the gravel. He had put so so you know when it rained and stormed last week or the week before it was so bad. Um okay, I'm feeling these. So if y'all are wondering what I'm doing, I'm feeling them for length. 
So usually I can kind of tell. Um, she doesn't have super even nail beds. Like if you look at this nail bed next to this nail bed, it's not like she's a model. She doesn't have an equal nail bed of pink, which means I have to go a little bit more middle of the road. You know, this one's going to be a tiny bit longer than this one because I want them to look like they belong on the same hand. Um, and to do that, you have to kind of find a balance. So these two are quite close. So the length from cuticle to tip on these two are equal. But this one, I can't because it would be so long for me to actually make this cuticle to tip. So it is a little bit shorter. Um, but if you're looking for a competition model, that's one of the things you're really trying to look for is someone that has it, these three nails in particular, the same nail bed length of cuticle to tip. I bet you didn't know that. <laughs> she nodded. You know. No, I didn't know that, but that's okay. You're perfectly fine. I'm just telling you I'm why I do imperfect. what I do. Yes. <laughs> You're fabulously fabulous. T-Tone likes your new camera setup. Oh, hey, good. I'm so glad. It's definitely a bit of a project, but... So when I'm filing, I keep my arm flat on the table for the most part um, because I want to keep a good grit on her grip on her finger. If it's too loose, you're going to end up with having just a harder time on your body. I feel like sometimes if I'm working like this, you're just, your I arms are you cinched up. Yeah, you can't see my body. Well, I guess you can in this one. Okay. So if you're, if I'm working and I'm holding her arms like this, I'm probably going to be a little bit more cinched up all the time. If I'm filing a full set, it might be a different story because I'm having to do a lot more angles and stuff. But for a standard appointment, try to take care of your body because if you're going to be working a long career, you need to make sure that everything is positioned well and good. Use your wrist assist. Wrist assist. This is the best thing ever. Keeps her hand propped up so that... Um, it's not flat and I'm not trying to tweak her wrist and then I can pull her really easily because it's on a roller so Stacy is asking if you are finished filing before you add your overlay yeah so I do all of my filing before I add product only at the very 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 end um, right before I finish do I go around and I just do a final just quick glance around each nail just to make sure that there's like no top coat that came down and to give them a little bit sharper of a finish. Um, but yes, all of the filing is going to happen before my product because I don't finish file the fill. So I go straight from filing to Trinity to color to done. So And we're reshaping. We're reshaping. So she was square. If you're just joining us, she had a square shape. And there are five weeks grown out. So we are reshaping to almond this time. And uh, I always go around, even though I use my prep bit, I always, always give the cuticle area a nice massage with my file because sometimes if your prep bit is smooth, it helps push back the cuticles one more time. The better your cuticles are pushed back when you apply your product, the better your grow out's going to be. So instead of, you know, after two weeks, you see almost no grow out usually. It's going to take, I would say, three weeks for people to really notice the grow out. What do you think? I think so too. Yeah, it really helps um, with how long it takes to show grow out if you really pay good attention to where you're placing product on the cuticle, get it as close as possible. But to do that, you've got to really make sure your cuticles are pushed back well. Plus the massage feels good. <laughs> it's a cuticle massage. Mm -hmm. It feels good. Yeah. And it's just, it's just making sure that your prep is absolutely perfect. I don't use um, really on anyone anymore, I don't have to use any primers. So I'm not using any acid primer. I'm not using any protein bonders. I literally just go from prep, proper prep to Trinity. And that's it. All right. That one is going to be long. I'm going to compare in a second. She knew she had her hand ready. Jada says, so happy to see you back. Thanks, Jada. So nice. April says so hi. So when I'm checking um, the nail, I want to look down the barrel 
when I'm shaping it and make sure that it's thin enough. So I angle it up a bit and then look down and make sure that all is well. Okay, and then cuticle massage. <laughs> I don't give them an actual <laughs> massage. Some some nail techs are super nice. They give their clients a whole hand massage at the end of their service. Oh. I'm not nice sometimes. You give us really good smelling oil. I do. I do give you good smelling oil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It smells so good. I do massage that in a bit with my towel. Mm -hmm. So we'll just we'll take that as a win. Well, you do very nice nails too. So <laughs> let's just <laughs> remember that. All right. So I'm comparing from cuticle to tip. I want hand to hand to be extremely similar. Looking down the barrel to make sure my free edge shape is correct. Because again, this is the last that I'm going to be looking at these nails before we just go straight to applying product. So make sure they are exactly how you want them. So side to side. So this one's definitely a bit longer. So I'm going to take a bit off. Check it again. Okay, now I'm just trying to mirror the shape. I want my almond to look similar from hand to hand. I don't want, you know, half the fingers super pointy and half of them really rounded. I'm going to try my best to make them match as close as possible. And I usually will thin down this tip really well because that one coat of Trinity that's going to glide over is going to be plenty. Um, so you don't need a lot of extra bulk on the nail. Oh yeah, April says she finishes with a hand massage and her clients say my favorite part. Sorry! <laughs> <laughs> I would have to add more time because usually I'm literally finishing as the next client is here and ready to go, so. Well, that's what we were talking about when I first got here today is that I come in with a whole bunch of different pictures and maybe ideas and it would be easier if you said, I'm not able to do that one because it would help eliminate, <laughs> it would help eliminate some of the choices, but you can pretty much do anything. Not anything. I know that there's been times when people come in and like, I would like this exactly. I'm like, there are 8 million colors in the world. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I have that exact color unless you found it on a website. Someone who does accents. Yeah. So that is not always possible. All right. And then one of the reasons I like using a table towel is because I actually flip this over and it keeps all the dust gone out of my way. So some people, I really like soft landings. And if I'm doing acrylic, which I really only do in, a, in competition, um, I really like using soft landings for those, but I, I like that just standard table towel, all the dust stays inside of it. And now I have a dust free environment, mm -hmm. which is good. All right, April Cook. April, you're in Alaska, right? You're the April in Alaska, I believe. If I'm correct, then I'm just gonna have to come up there and get my nails done. Hey, Gail. Get your hand massage. Yes. All right. So I reached in my drawer. I always grab my brush and an orange wood stick. My brush actually sits in my pencil container with my orange wood stick. So I grab both at the same time. So new orange wood stick, a new brush, Trinity. Every now and then I get them dented. And so mine are almost always dented because those are the ones that I keep for me. And I send the not dented ones out to customers and pray that the post office does not dent them. I can only do what I can do, you know? All right, so Trinity. So I gave the nails a really good wipe down. My wipe that I used is, um, make sure that I'm, uh, the wipe that I used is the Accents Lint-Free Wipes. And my um, Menda Pump has a mixture of about 75% um, Prep and wipe and 25% of acetone. Okay, freeze that. April's in Michigan. Michigan. You know there's another April that's in Alaska, but it's not Cook, and I'm trying to remember what her name is. Hold on, I see a 
cuticle situation that I missed. If I have any cuticle situations that I missed, it's now that I want to do it before I put any gel on there because I definitely don't want to be trying to mess with things when I have a nice sticky layer of gel on. All right, let that dry for a second. Dry, 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 dry. Okay. If your clients are super oily, like usually when they're brand new, they might be oily. Um, in which case, then you might have to deal with primers and stuff. But if you wipe their nails and they dry that quickly, they're not oily. You should have no problem not having to add any extra bonding. This piece of fuzz. so funny because it happens all the time but I really just I'm so used to working around it that mm -hmm. yeah. I ignore it okay so when I'm rotating her nail around I'm checking the line of light to see that I don't have any major high spots major low spots and then I usually will try to brush off the end of it because I want to keep that free edge really nice and thin because then I'm going to be putting the color over the top so that will be no problem looking at the ring finger there was a little bit of a wave that created itself before it got set you're not going to see it when i put the color on but i see it and it annoys me that it's not exactly how i wanted it it did not behave itself if you feel like you need a little bit more you can take a little bit of a tail and just drag it to the spot that you need it and then flash just going to do one, two, three. Uh, I flash set each finger, absolutely, just two to three seconds. And the reason is because I'm using Trinity. If I don't flash it, it's going to run. The shape is going to change. It's extremely fluid. It's a low, um, high viscosity gel, which means it's just very, very fluid. And I have tried to do two nails before. And what ends up happening is a nail that's going to have to get finish filed because it does not stay in the perfect place that I had it because it starts to move too quickly. Um, it only takes two to three seconds though to let it flash. And you can use a flashlight. So if you want to have a flashlight next to you and use that, you totally can. This is usually when I'll take a sip of my drink for a second or whatever. Um, but it's just kind of how it is. All right, I had a, there was a little bit of a Another, Another cuticle issue for a situation. moment. Situation. Yeah, just a smidge. And it's really because when I go to apply your color, if it's there, then it messes up my cuticle line of color. And, and then it's not perfect. And I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, as much as I can be. Sometimes I do have to, like, let it, it go. Let <laughs> it go. Oh my gosh, I should not sing. <laughs> it's a bad idea. <laughs> Don't laugh, it moves the nail. Sorry. <laughs> you just broke out. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I knew what song you were singing. Though. I know. Well, everyone knows what song it is. It doesn't mean it's good. <laughs> doesn't mean I did it any justice whatsoever. All right. So there's a little bit of an indent here. So I'm going to take a little string. And I don't want to drag my gel from anywhere else because it's all in a good spot. So I'm going to add just a smidge more. Oh, and then because I tilted the nail, gravity got in my way. See how fast that moves? This is why I flash care people. Super important. All so right. is there a heat spike with this amount of gel? Um, a little bit. Go ahead and take that out. So with the thumb, a lot of times they'll just keep it in. And some people don't feel any heat spike and some people because they're they've been going in for just three seconds you don't get the heat spike so it takes about three and a half seconds I guess you would say to feel the heat spike so usually the clients are coming out before there's any heat spike and it's it is a small amount of gel and it really just depends on how sensitive they are if their hormones are high they might feel it more often um all right you can put that back in yeah, I count. Go ahead like, and let that cure whole now. So her whole hand's going to do. 1,000 to 1,000. And then right when it starts to feel a little bit hot, then 
we think you're already coming out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> usually, you know, and if someone after two seconds gets hot, then I'll have them come out. If it's getting warm, it's setting up, which means it's not going to move anymore. And that's all I'm trying to do is prevent it from moving. So if someone's feeling it at like two seconds, just have them come out just say, it's fine. Mm -hmm. You can come out after two. But if they just go in and come right back out, it may or may not have set up. And you'll just need to keep an eye on it. I would probably worry the most on the pointer finger before you go to the thumb. On the other hand, just because then you're turning the whole hand sideways I and mean, it isn't set up enough, gravity is going to move it. Do you like how I used my nail as a tool right there? So this one, gravity's pulling it. And so it also depends on how much of a natural C curve someone has in their nail. Someone who has a flatter nail, it's not really going to move so much, but she's got a very nice, like, natural C curve. So it's going to move down into those sidewalls rather quickly. Um, Forever ago, before I started using Trinity, for 15 years I used natural pink or natural clear. So if you go back to my old videos before Trinity, it was all natural. And natural didn't move at all, um, but they were discontinuing it. So I was like, crap, now I have to use something else. So I had to teach myself how to use this, and I fought it for a while. And now I love it because I don't need any bonding gel, whereas with natural you need OptiBond or some kind of bonding gel under it and usually I would use primers and stuff. I eliminated all of that when I started using Trinity. So that was really nice. Also, if we, when we flash, what, flash, flash freeze cure. it, mm -hmm. um, when I go in to fully cure it, then I don't get the heat spike. Yeah, there's no heat spike. It's really, it's only those first few seconds that you would feel any heat spike. So by coming out, you're allowing it to cool, but it's not moving anymore. So it really helps prevent a major heat spike quite a lot mm -hmm. compared to anything else. But yeah, this is just a very thin application. Um, some people will call it a structured manicure. Um, that's kind of the new catchphrase right now. I've always called it 30 day manicure um, because my clients will usually go mm -hmm. 30 days. So you can see from the side how I'm doing it. I push the gel in front of my brush and then I keep it flat and glide over the top. So I don't feel like I have enough on here. So I'm just going to dab a little bit right in the middle. And I'm just brushing down over the top. Then I'm going to come around the side. I'm wiping excess off on my pot around the side and pull anything off on the tip and then it's just going to self level itself right back down that's it all right flash through that all right so that was trinity okay and what color did we decide on did you like the altitude uh, hush hush, hush. Right, i'm gonna grab hush top row with all my whites and creams and nudes and things like that. Now that it's gray outside, it looks like over on your nail polish wall, you might need a light. Well, that bulb is out. Oh, that's so why it's, it's making the whole bright. room a yeah. little bit dark, dark. All right. So it's two with design here, French, French and design. Is that right? Okay. Yes. So this is Hush. And we're going to do the cat eye orange for her little designs. Anyone say anything? So quiet. I hope everyone's having a good week. It's Thursday, right? So it's usually my mm -hmm. late day. We're heading out to family weekend to visit our college student child oh they're at what school again <laughs> boise state boise oh you know how many people are at boise yes a lot of so your many. clients kids <laughs> yeah so many of my clients kids at least are at a boise couple state. anyway yeah yeah so you're one probably of gonna your see shauna this weekend right? yeah one of your other clients is my son's roommate oh all right They're so roommates. this hasn't been used in a little while and look at the brush i'm gonna try to come in real close 
don't know if you can see it, but there's a little bit of marbling on it, which means that it's not mixed well anymore. So this happens if a product sits for a while. So I'm gonna put my um, brush aside. I'm gonna grab a spatula and just go in and give it a quick stir. This is really important, especially if it's a new one or if you go to open one that you haven't really used in a while. It's so much easier just to take 20 seconds, give it a little stir, and now you can see that it's totally creamy and perfect again. So um, then I will usually put this in here. Pound it. Don't be nice. Give the last little mix, and now it's uh. good to go. Linda is asking if you will save the live. The lives should be saved automatically. So this is the way that it will now post to YouTube so you guys don't have to wait anymore. So what I used to do is go live on Facebook and then upload it later to YouTube. And then Facebook made it impossible for me to save it unless I like went to my page to save it, which was never good enough quality. So the last couple of videos I had done, I don't know, a year or so ago, um, the quality wasn't very good. And I'm like, I'm not going to do it anymore. So, you know, I get that Facebook is trying to keep everyone only on their platform, but the result was I just didn't do videos for a year. So I don't think it worked the way they wanted that to. Um, I had just had to wait until I could figure out a solution. And so the solution is now when I go live, it's on both platforms at the same time, which really keeps my clients busy because shoot, they get to read all the comments in both chat rooms and, <laughs> and try to tell me when the questions are up. All right, go ahead and put that in. Um, and then, uh, so they should get both saved and both posted all the time. So, and in this particular one, we went, we had to turn it off a little we bit had to after turn the beginning. Off and on. So it, it would turn off and on, but it would come back. So it didn't like restart the live. It did on Facebook, but on YouTube, I don't think it restarted the live. I think it just went black for. Okay. So if you're rewatching it on YouTube where you will post it, it, yeah. it might black out kind of a little bit after the beginning, but it comes back on. Yeah. But it hopefully won't happen again. It's because I was trying to figure out why it wasn't showing up on Facebook. And it's because I had the privacy setting to only me. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. so that was from yesterday when I was trying to test it. Well, apparently it stays that until I change it. So it's changed now. Hit it. <laughs> April said hit it. Yeah. I think it's so cute when people will like shake their polish bottle like this. I'm like, mm -hmm. that ain't going to do nothing. It's not got a whole bunch of solvents in it. It's not a very super, super runny product. So you're going to need a little bit more than just giving it a, a delicate little shake. So pound the crap out of it. So again, this color is Hush. Am I centered in the camera when I'm at this angle? I can't tell. No, you're a little over sideways. Let's go this way. Yeah. I probably remove the thing. There. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she's like let me scoot i can i'll i can my it, the camera arm is like next to the disinfectant tray so that's what yeah, gets in the way doesn't quite stretch gets in the way it's rude So on the French ones on this second coat, I'm actually going to brush off the tip because I I don't want it to have a big bump. And so removing it a little bit will help. If it was a standard French, I would have actually done it with the blush or the delicate mm -hmm. um, on both layers. But because this is a solid color, I wait until the second layer and then I just have to be real careful because it's not going to... It'll blend okay because this is a pretty opaque color. But that's really just what I do. Yao said, this color painting part looks so smooth. Yeah, this is great um, gel polish. So there's a lot of gel polish in the market. And Luxio is one of the only ones that is completely solvent-free. 
and it just um, makes it fantastic. You can tell if a gel polish has solvent in it. You can smell it. If it smells like nail polish, it has solvents in it. 100% uh, gel like this one, like Ugly Duckling that I also sell. 100% um, gel. There's no solvents in it, which is part of the reason it separates a little bit, but some of the solvent ones, I feel like they have to shake them all the time. With this Hush color, I could use this probably for a good month now and not have to stir it again. It's not going to separate that often, but it hasn't quite been a popular one super lately, but we're getting into fall, mm -hmm. so people change what they want. They're doing less pinks and more neutrals and nudes and oranges and browns. I've already done some browns. To the side of that one. It's as far to the side as it's going to get okay. without being in the cuticle. Okay. So French on two of them. I'm going to get a new wipe. Wipe my brush off. And so on this one, I'm going to be doing the French. So I'm just going to wipe off the, the second layer of color about where, oops, this guy's super long, stupid nail. Touched <laughs> your nail. Sometimes we have a collision with our nails. Collision. So I'm just brushing down where I'm going to be painting on her French cat eye. And this is just going to help so that when I do that, it's not on top of the gel. It's a little bit more like in, in line with it. Less of a bump. Oh, Sujel. Hello. From Puerto Rico. I need to go there more. I haven't been in a while. Well, my grandma, my grandpa and my grandma both passed away. And so we don't go back there as often. Mm, yeah. But my mom has a cousin out there. So could go see her. I have stories of my summer there. <laughs> when mm. I was like seven or eight, my from California back to Puerto Rico. And they were, you need to send us your children. You need to send us your children. And they were like, all right. So we went and spent a summer in Puerto Rico. So fun. Yeah. And there was an aunt that I really liked, a titi. Mm -hmm. And so I stayed with her in an apartment in San Juan. And I think my brothers both stayed maybe with my grandparents. And Mike was, I don't know why I was in a different place. Probably because <laughs> it was a lot of us to take care of, three of us. And my brothers were mean. I don't know. It's quite possible. And you liked your titi. And I liked my titi. And so we played a lot of dominoes. Oh. Um, back in the day, but dominoes are big in Puerto Rico, I think, and in Mexico. When I was here in Mexico at the park, there was a lot of people in Mexico playing dominoes too. It's like the thing to do to go to the park, mm -hmm. and they have like tables everywhere, and you can just chill and play dominoes. What's your favorite game? Oh, have you played the new one? I have a new game for you. It's a good one to travel with. Everyone we teach it to. They get addicted, and I get pictures within a week of them playing it somewhere else because they went and bought it. So it's called Sky Joe. Does anyone out there know Sky Joe yet? So it's a card game. It's very simple. Um, it's oh, I don't think I, I remember to show Jessica White, so I taught her how to play it. Is it a special deck or a standard deck? It's a cards? special deck um, because there's negative two, negative one, zero, and then one through... Okay. 12 and there's so many cards of each one um super easy game but it's really addicting and it's there's very few things that other people can do to affect you and mm -hmm. so it's how good were your choices and how lucky were you so it's definitely a combination of luck and choices okay. and i think that's what makes it kind of fun um but we took it camping and there was like 12 people that wanted to play all at the same time. I'm like, well, this is going to be interesting. So we had to like shuffle the deck a lot, but mm. it was really fun. So like the best story. Do you think you could play with two decks for more people? Or uh, oh yeah. Well? No, I think it would yeah. work fine, okay. but it would just take a long time to go around. Mm -hmm. But the trigger for the end of the game is when someone flips over their last card, but they have to have the lowest 
score in front of them. And if they don't, if someone ends up having a lower score, they have to double their points. And the goal mm. is to have the lowest score. Mm. So it's played over multiple rounds and everything. Mm -hmm. um, so when you have more people, everyone's like afraid to go out because... If you go out and you don't have a lot of score, you're in trouble. Yeah. This is asking what color. Love that color. This is Hush. Uh, so, yes. Good job, Hush or Almondine. Very well done. Yes, oh. Hush. Hush. Very popular color. And then this person was just saying that they have learned so much from watching you. Oh, I'm so glad. It's comments like that that make me want to come back on for you guys. Well, and I've been getting messages i probably get in the last year on average i'm trying to find the right dotting tool that i want there we go i wanted one that was a little bigger these ones are good but they're all too small um in the last year i've probably got a message a week from you guys and it's so sweet <laughs> so sweet um just someone that would say oh i i miss your videos come back and things like that so I just... and they like this other camera oh good hi <laughs> Um, I'm trying to decide if this is the brush that I want. And my drawer full of brushes. I have my set. I took a whole bunch of brushes with me. And so I don't think they've all made their way out of my world. So I'm traveling. Stuff always takes forever. Um, let me get a magnet. I really like to use, so this is my little trick for magnets. Um, Oh, I just told we missed you so much. I missed you all. All right, so this is my little trick for magnets. These little tiny magnets, you can get on my website from, they're from Profiles. They have a magnet set, and they come with like, I don't know, eight of these little ball ones, and I really like them um, for most of my stuff. And also, you can jump on, I have little tiny, even tinier ones that I have too, but I don't know where they went. Um, because they get lost because they're like super, super tiny. Those ones work really well too. So for doing cat eye. So I'm just going to hold this in my hand. So I'm doing a French on these two and it's just a line French. So it's just small. Yeah. Oh, long foot. There you go. And because I don't want this to move after I do it, I'm just going to go ahead and switch hands because I want to keep it perfect because I am... I want to keep it perfect because I am. Okay, so I usually will go around all the sides and then decide where I want it to be. So doing it just on the bottom, I get kind of that cat eye right on the French line. So it looks really cool as it moves. Go ahead and put that in. All right, sorry YouTube, you guys all done. You're all back. The camera's got disconnected for a second for some reason. So what brush is this? This is a number two art brush from Accents. It's just kind of the right size for a good control. I thought about using the bigger one, but I didn't find it. And I'm kind of glad I didn't because this is better, I think, for this situation. Jenny Lynn was wondering what to do with the little magnet. So she might like, I'm sure a lot of people would want to see a full cat eye video. Yes, I will definitely be doing them. I'm doing a lot more cat eye since I've been off video because I took some classes and I learned how to do cat eye properly mm -hmm. because Anna W, I don't ever attempt to say her name because it's like 80 characters long. Um, she's lovely Polish. And um, I took her awesome cat eye class. So I definitely learned a lot of cat eye stuff. So I'm, I'm holding it underneath almost, right in front, and I'm going around the edge because after I kind of activate it all, 
I want to create the line with the cat eye. So as it moves, it kind of picks it up. Do you see that? It's yeah, cool. I love I love cat eyes. Yeah. It's Sometimes addicting. we do full nails. We do all different stuff. Yeah. Once I started really figuring out how to do cat eye, now once people do it, they're like, it's like mood polish. It is mm-hmm, It's addicting. like really hard to go, okay, I will attempt to do something else. I loved it so much, but so finding Yeah, this is way. the first time you've done French cat eye on me. Okay, once you have it where you want. So yeah, I just stick it on the end of my cuticle pusher because it lets me control it really easily and it doesn't get lost. Pro tip. It almost looks like spot, and then I'm going around and getting a light spot right along the end. So then as it moves, it makes that effect. Mm-hmm. All right, another one. This is whoa. I think it's... No, the middle ones are the art. Oh, yeah. You're the pro. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Just shut up. <laughs> no! Hush. Hush. <laughs> so Boise State. Do they like all the snow when it winter turns? Um, well, some of them do. There's a ski hill that's very, very close Um, and they can get like student tickets and go skiing if, if you're a winter sport person, skiing mm -hmm. or snowboarding. Um, I'm sure there are some students that come from warmer climates that get a little bit of a shock Mm -hmm. when the winter snow falls. But this weekend it's going to be super Super nice, sunny. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's supposed to be pretty decent here too. I'll be back on the property doing slab prep. Okay. Okay, so now these ones are like corner little three little corner puddle things. That's the wrong side. So doing three little corner petals and then I will pull them in with my brush. And the reason I do usually cat eye one nail at a time is because I can be, if I do this one and I'm doing this one and then I'm cat eyeing this one, it sometimes will affect the other nail and so my cat eye gets messed up. So if I just do one nail at a time, it keeps it from affecting the other one. What kind of magnet is that on your pusher? So it is a magnet from the magnet set that Profile sells. I have it on my website at lovenails.com. There's a magnet set and it's in that set. So it comes, that set comes with a standard bar magnet and um, I think it even has like the crisscross magnet and it has a bunch of those little magnets. So that is a really fantastic little set. And yeah, it's at lovenails.com. So that's the look we're going for. So and then I can go around and I can play with this and decide how I want these to look. I think I'm going to push it so that there's a dark spot mm-hmm. at the front, and then the bright spot is towards the middle of the nail. Cute. OK, next, please. Someone mentioned that she was glad I do real world nails. So I'm going to do the opposite side on this hand. So we're going to do over here. Can you read that comment on YouTube? I just saw it pop up. Uh, the one about the pusher, the magnet oh, on the pusher. Got it. Okay. Yeah. I hadn't looked. Yeah. Do you offer any online classes? Um, I haven't yet. I've pretty much just been doing these videos, which are free, which I know people definitely appreciate. Um, I'm not opposed to doing online classes. I've been learning how to use these videos, so I might actually be able to make it so um, and make it work. But what is it you guys want me to do? Should I do a whole thing on like, because I'm planning to start getting back into traveling and teaching also. 
Um, um, so like, do you want just a 30 day manicure class where I'm basically doing all the stuff I've been doing in this appointment or a sculpturing class? And what, what is it about an online class that you like that's different than this? Because I haven't taken a ton of online classes. Most of the ones that I've gone to have all been in person. So tell me what it is about online classes that you really like so that I, if I decide to do them, I know what to do. Because it's kind of one of those things where I just don't even know. What makes it different than this other than you should pay for it? <laughs> both, <laughs> both classes and come to Minnesota. Minnesota. It's not too hard to arrange classes if people have a salon where I can do them. When I used to travel and do a lot of classes, it was usually because someone said, I have a salon it's big enough for a class. You know, I can have eight people six people or whatever if we set up tables need some more um and so if you guys have a salon and you're like hey i have a salon we can use it then we can put together a class promote it and try to get it filled usually if i can get six people set up in a class i can make it so and if i can do two locations within like six hours i've done that a lot too you know i'll do one class and then have two days there and then i'll drive four or five hours and do another class back in the day. So another, um, I guess, um, idea for the online classes would be private online tutoring slash reviewing of work. Mm -hmm. Like, I guess, kind of a tutoring. People sell their, yeah, people send their, um, their stuff to me all the time. And I have no problem, you guys, not charging for that. Like, just send me a picture and be like, hey, give me some advice on what could I do better? You know, what do you see that I don't see? Which I feel like doing nails, that is something that's so hard is like, you know, when I did Elena's class with these, I'm like, you know, she goes, oh, it's this and this and this. And I'm like, I don't see what you see. What do you see? I don't see it. You know, and it's so hard to just learn sometimes to see what someone sees. See, this is why I didn't go that far over. Remember you had me go farther over that line? Yeah. Now it ran into the side. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> Sorry, I'll file it away. It's just funny. Because mm -hmm. you pointed it out I and I was like, I don't know. know. What about her? Okay, and so she, that person said... They could only do online it because they're in Canada and are not. It's hard for them to travel. Yeah. Um, well, if you're in Vancouver, I can go use the Accents headquarters and teach class anytime, which I talked to them about because I've. It's been a while since I've done it. I've used to do it because I have a great classroom. Um, so, but if you're farther, if you're really far from Vancouver, then I cannot help you. And another idea for extreme. Um, online classes was extreme shaping. That's fun. It is, it's, it's okay to teach it. It's hard to, cause that requires so much of, um, like I need to see what you're doing. I understand it, but most of extreme shaping is form placement and properly prepping your forms. We had a really great class from Elena on these extreme shapes. A little bubble in this. Enter something. Um, Nikki is also doing a French like this this week. Oh. Uh, on okay. one of her clients, I think. You know that far ahead of time? Wow. I usually do not. Or maybe Nikki is getting it. She said, they said, someone is getting this French technique this week. Oh, they're going to be like, when someone says, well, I don't know what I want, mm -hmm. that's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I totally understand what she just said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like, know what I want. 
Um, I know what you want. Yeah. That's what happens. That's what Nikki said. Yeah, it's really, really fun. I have a lot of new cat eyes that I started carrying, you guys. A couple months ago, I just brought in um, Anna's cat eyes from Blue Amber. So if you're in the need for some new cat eyes, I have all of the Profiles ones, which have some beautiful ones like this one. This is Pumpkin Spice um, from Profiles on my website at Love Nails. And I have tons from um, Blue Amber, too, because I kind of got obsessed with cat eyes. So I'm like, I must have them all. And so I, I do cat eye in some way, usually every day on somebody in some fashion. Yep, that's exactly what she said. I'll talk someone into it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so again, I'm going to go on the inside, outside, and then the other side, and then I'm pushing up the cat eye because I have the dark on the front part and then the light towards the end of my petals is kind of how I designed this one. All right, so that's it. So I'm going to close that up. I'm going to pop this off and put it away so I don't lose it. I think the set probably comes with Five, six, eight, something. Magnets. Yeah. All right. And then we're going to go straight into top coat. I do on time. Oh, my goodness. I'm so behind. That's what happens when we play with cameras and chat too much. So I like Luxio Gloss. It is my favorite um, because it is a little bit thicker viscosity than, like, Shine On. And anytime I'm doing art like this, you're going to have little divots in the nails. And so what I like about it is after I apply on the whole nail, so you might know this as like a slip layer, right? So I'm applying it smoothly and evenly on the whole nail. I'm going to do all four, not your thumb yet, just the first four because we're going to be working with gravity. So I'm going to flash cure this. So after I have a slip layer on all of them, I'm going to go through and check, do any have a low spot? And I'm actually going to use my top coat to fill in to make as smooth of a surface as I can because we have hand painted bits. Freeze that just for like two seconds. Okay. It's a really quick freeze and it's just to make it so that when I turn her hand sideways to do the thumb, that top coat doesn't run um, because I want it to stay where it's supposed to be. My next person will probably be walking in the door any second, so if you hear noise, that's why. Blue amber. Brenda loves the blue amber. Is yeah. that the cat eye one? Yes. Blue amber has a ton of cat eye. I have all of them. Um, but just as a teaser, oh, it's kind of dusty. <laughs> Shocker. Um, these are all the ones that I did in her class. Dun, ta -da! They're all different cat eye designs. They were super, 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 super fun. So when someone comes in and they're like, I think I want something different, I'll be like, here's the cat eye. So I have those kind of just off to the side, but it has an example of all of the colors on all of those in one way or another. So I'm obsessed with them. They are so much fun. There's a blue, there's different versions. There's like nightshade one collection and those ones kind of go black so those are popular right now and then there's like a pastel which will be more popular in the spring and enchanted collection might be the sparkly ones and they're still so so glittery so they're so pretty so again i'm getting just like a nice even coat on all of them and treating it like a slip layer in case i have any low spots so I did too. Next client's on their way. It's okay. We're close. We are close. We're almost done. Okay. Freeze that for a second. Here's my ring. Okay. Hello. Hi. It's Mo. We're live. We are. I've got a new camera set up. Very cool. It took forever to figure out, but we are back. Back to business. Hopefully helping people because that's what it's about. Alrighty. Okay. 
Okay, so that hand's gonna go ahead and finish curing. This one's ready, so I'm going to wipe the tacky layer. The, um, this top coat does have a, stack, a tacky layer, which is good. Yeah, so I can do a class of Third Accents HQ. If we have interest, then I can definitely put a class together. So let me know if you guys wanna do like a two day, I can do a sculpting class, or I can just do a salon nail class with nail art and 30 day manicures. Let me know which kind of class you wanna do, or if two days to be able to do both would be better. I'm not too far away. It's I'm only about three hours at max from HQ, so that's easy. All right, so I'm just going around the perimeter of her nails, and this is to make sure that they're nice and sharp, that the top coat, oh, there's always like little bits, you know? And so this makes sure that everything is finished to perfection. On the sides. And front. And see on this one, she was like, get the side. And so I did, and then it ran to the side because I was like, mm, I had a feeling. It's like I've done her nails before. <laughs> like a hundred times. At me. <laughs> <laughs> She's staring at me like, what? <laughs> okay, you're right. Because <laughs> it gets really. I know better. It just, you're right. It, the side I do of your know nail better. does that. And if I do mm -hmm. that, the gravity flows. You get that every time. Oh, Linda's asking what part sh um, what part of Canada are you in? Yeah. I'm not in Canada. I'm in Washington. So HQ is just north right over the border from me. So I'm not in Canada. I'm in Washington I'm just, State. Yes, Washington State. I'm just um I'm just south of the Canadian border, north of Seattle. Mm -hmm. So this is when you get your massage. Yep, this is the massage. This is the massage. So I'm massaging the oil into her finger because you can see they always get dried out um, from all the dust and everything. So I kind of massage it up into the finger and over the nail and it helps remove anything left on the nail, hydrates the cuticle, gives you a fine, final finish. Final finish. Oh, there's a little hush on the screen right here. Not allowed. top coat. Sometimes I go to do that part and people are like, no, I like to do that part. <laughs> and they want to be able to pick off the little bit of top oh, coat yeah, that yeah. got on their mm -hmm. fingertip. And I'm like, it goes back to the paste days, you know, when we all used to like play with paste. and put Or it put on glue. Hand. Yeah, like Elmer's glue. glue like, like this and yeah. let it dry. And oh then, yeah, totally. Uh, peel it off. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We I'm all did that. Part of that generation. I feel like our children, <laughs> yeah, I feel like our children didn't, like, didn't get to do that. And so they don't know the joy of Peeling it off. Right. I feel like it could be an anxiety thing. They could just, it's like a fidget spinner it's a for good back in the day. fidgety thing. Mm -hmm. Remember when those fidget spinners were like all the rage? Oh gosh. It's ridiculous. Some of this was at the age where she was so excited. I think they're still really good tools for people. They are, but I don't think it's as crazy as it was for a little while. It was yeah, just... they're more of a therapeutic tool than a toy. Yeah, they were crazy for a while. What color are you going to do today, Miss Mo? Oh, gosh, I have no idea. What? <laughs> Did you do the new green already? No. Oh, there's a new green. Ooh, I might do that. Yeah, it's a new fall green. Okay. It's really nice. I might do that. Very nice. All right, guys. That's it for our little French design cat eye fill situation. Fall fill with Trinity. Fall fill with Trinity, yes. Which... Really, every fill is with Trinity. So, but this is our first one with fall cat eye fun, funness. Funness. Make sure I get the fingers all good. Thank you. Alrighty, let's see them. Pretty cute. I love the cat eye. Oh, it makes them so cool. <laughs> all right. Okay. Bye. We'll catch you next time. All right. Hi. Okay, well, now we get to figure out how to turn it off. <laughs> uh, I honestly don't know.
Where'd it go? Oh, here we go. Okay, bye. Okay, bye.